Now let's look at a use case for redirects with proxies that can help optimize our builds, optimize our sites, uh, and make use of third-party services. In this example, we're going to be uh, using Cloudinary to start uh, serving our image assets. And we'll be using their URL-based APIs uh, to streamline what otherwise might be some heavy tasks in our build for a site uh, and for serving optimized images easily. Let's look at the site that we're going to be uh, exploring. It's one of the most important websites on the web. It's petsof.netlify.com. Uh, and this is a site which uh, the Netlify team add their pets to. It's a place that you can find important information and photos of Maximiliano and of Bert Macklin uh, and of Gatto uh, and of Sundance and of Angel uh, and all of these pets that are the owners of different members of the Netlify team. Now this is a page which grows organically over time. As more people join the company, more people add their photos to this list. And this is the kind of page that could be quite heavy if the assets that are in here weren't all being carefully optimized. The way the site is uh, managed, if we go and have a look uh, at the code in the GitHub repository, and you can find this as well. It's a, a public Git repo, netlify forward slash pets off netlify. It's a site which is built by a static site generator. If we go and have a look at the source here, we'll find that there's uh, a place where there's a bunch of data, which is an array of objects. Each one is just the name of the, the pets that we want to show and the file, which is the photo, which shows them. We have a, an images folder with all of the images of all of the pets uh, for the site. Now these are uploaded by all kinds of different people. So this isn't just limited to developers and engineers at Netlify. So as you might imagine for any content managed site, the assets aren't necessarily all optimized on the site. And in fact, we've decided to not make optimizing the assets part of the build. Instead, we're gonna use uh, a different system. So uh, if we go off and let's look at Guff here. So there's a, a picture of Guff, uh, which is Laurie's uh, dog here on the site. The original asset for this, if we go and look at the asset, which is, here we are. This is the original asset and it's being served on the site in the images folder. All of those assets in the images folder are being served. This is a two and a half megabyte image. So really we wouldn't want that and other uh, images to be two and a half megabytes in this long page. So what we're going to do is we're going to optimize those very popular way to optimize uh, things would be at build time to get all of the image assets there and run a build script which resizes those, saves them in an optimized way, shrinks the size of them so they can be served. But we're not going to do that as part of our build. Instead, we're going to use a third party service to do that for us. We're going to use Cloudinary. Uh, Cloudinary is a service which is all about an image CDN and image transformations. And we'll let them do this heavy lifting for us. Uh, this is the dashboard for uh, my Cloudinary account. I'm just on the, the free tier here. And it's perfectly adequate for my needs here. You can see I have a bunch of assets in here. In fact, let's go and have a look at this one. This is sourced from Pets of Netlify, uh, Images, Guff Lorry. It's the same image we just looked at. And this is in Cloudinary system. And we can, in fact, go and take a look at the URL that they'll serve it on. So they will serve it from their CDN for us at cloudry.com is my account image. And then here is the source image that they used for this. They, they used the pets of netlify.com forward slash images guffflory. That's the image that we're publishing. Cloudinary offer a fetch API. That's in fact what this URL is for. It's uh, an image using their fetch API, and this is the source image for it. So by making this request, Cloudinary will go off and fetch the source image from this URL. They'll ingest it. They'll do whatever transformations you might uh, want, and then they'll serve it from their CDN. And we can start to, to do manipulations on this and transformations right in the URL. So there's uh, a syntax for changing the height of this. So if we say, let's make the height 400, they'll resize that, cache that version for us and save it and, and start serving that for us on this URL. This is a really powerful way of ingesting assets into a third party, doing transformations, and then serving that for us. It would be ideal, really, to be serving this much smaller, lighter weight asset onto our site than serving 
at all of these at their original asset sizes. And that's exactly what we do. So instead of the URLs for all of these assets be, that we're serving on the page being images slash the asset name, instead of that, if we go and look at the view source of this page, we can see actually the URLs that we're using for all of these images are a little bit different. They're forward slash cloud and read and a number and then the, the asset, the image file name. This is relative to our domain, but you can see we've got a value in here and the name of the file. What are we doing? How are we getting from there to this URL? We're using something we've used along the way already. We're using a, a redirect. So let's go back and look at our source. Let's look at the netlify.toml file. And here we are. Here we can see a redirect rule being described. And what we're doing here is we're saying any requests to the cloud and read uh, URL path we're going to pull out a couple of named placeholder parameters. So we're going to have something called height, something called image, and then we'll pass those along to a URL that we want to be uh, rewriting to or proxying to behind the scenes. So we'll use the height that we pull out of the URL to populate that h underscore height parameter in the Cloud and Re API. We'll pass through the original image, uh, which we're still serving from our domain, so that Cloudinary can ingest that and serve that to us. This means then with that with this redirect rule, all of these URLs now work correctly. So we can go and see Professor Cuddles. We can see Cloud and Read forward slash 200 Professor Cuddles. So that is proxying that through for us to Cloud and Read. We can change change the size of that. So Professor Cuddles can be it's hypnotic, it can be served at whatever size we like. Critically, this is not having to do another DNS hop for the user. The user is still connecting to petsofnetlify.com. Their browser doesn't have to go and do all of the DNS handshaking, or all of the various bits of the request that can add latency to uh, to requests. Uh, instead, they're all uh, requesting things directly from the petsofnetlify.com domain. Behind the scenes on Netlify's edge network, the proxying is happening to the to, to the third party, to Cloudinary. But then these assets can also be cached within Netlify CDN. This means that this page, uh, rather than being made up of lots of very large, heavy images, can now come down to much smaller, optimized images being served without having to uh, go through the steps of a heavy build process. These are all just done at execution time and then cached in the CDN. One other thing to notice is that in addition to our proxy rule in our redirects, we also have this one. We have a 404. So in case that any requests are made to this Cloud and Read path that we have, if those aren't satisfied by Cloud and Read for whatever reason, instead we will we will use our custom 404 to route that instead to the original image being served from the pets of Netlify domain. So it means that we have a bit of safety just in case anything should happen here. So there's another useful way to use redirects. We looked at how we can be proxying to third parties with named placeholders uh, to pull out properties from the URL and pass those along to other APIs and services. We've seen that we're avoiding DNS-based performance pitfalls there by continuing to expose things to the user on the same domain uh, as the rest of the site. By adding this proxy and this abstraction between the URLs on our site and the third party services, it means that we avoid any tight coupling between our front end and the APIs that serve it behind the scenes. We can always change uh, those URLs uh, invisibly to the front end should we decide to integrate with different services. And it also means that we can have an asset pipeline with things like image optimizations that we outsource to other services so that our builds can remain fast and efficient uh, and we can offset the work to other services uh, that are optimized for those.